So let's tackle another problem that's also complicated. This one involves horizontal and vertical motion. So in this problem, we're going to tackle a pro we're going to tackle a situation wherein both horizontal motion and vertical motion is exhibited. Okay, so let's check. Jack is standing on a bridge seven meters high. He wants to drop a water balloon on his unsuspecting friend named Jake, who is jogging in a path under the bridge. Jake stands at 1.75 meters tall and is jogging towards the bridge at a constant speed of 3 meters per second. When Jake is 4 meters away from the bridge, Jack releases the water balloon from rest. Will Jake get hit by the balloon? Justify your answer with a mathematical solution. Okay, so uh, let's try to visualize this using the sketch approach. So we know that there's a bridge. I'll just say that this is the uh, bridge right here. Okay, side view of the bridge. Let's say that Jake is on top of the bridge and he wants to drop this water balloon on his unsuspecting friend who is biking or jogging at the bottom. Is he biking? Yeah. He is jogging. So, yay, jogging. So we know that the friend at the bottom, whose name is uh, Jake, is moving and jogging at a constant speed of 3 meters per second. Okay? And we also know that he is uh, 4 meters away from the bridge. Okay? We know that Jack drops the water bomb from rest, so that's VI is equal to 0 for the water bomb. We also know that it will gravity will act on this, and therefore A is equal to negative G, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay? And Jack is going this way. Jake is going that way. The, the distance that the water bomb will travel, or delta Y, is interesting because we know that the bridge is 7 meters high. However, we know that uh, Jake stands 1.75 meters tall. So all in all, delta Y is the height of the bridge minus the height of Jake. Why? Because if the water bomb will hit Jake, it will hit him on the head, and that's at the very top of his height. So if we uh, subtract this, okay, we're going to get around 5.25 meters. Okay, that's how much the water balloon will travel as it goes to the bottom. However, we know that it is negative because your water balloon goes downwards. Okay, it's a downward motion and therefore it is negative. So, this is the given. What are we being asked to look for? Okay, will Jake get hit by the balloon? That's the question we have to answer. Well, one way we can determine this is if their time coincides. So, if the time of the water balloon is equal to the time of Jake, then we can, we can say that it's a direct hit. If it's not equal, then we can say that Jake was able to avoid the water balloon. Okay? So what equation can we then use for this situation? Okay? I think we will use the same equation because in both cases, we're given VI, okay? We're given displacement, we're given acceleration, okay? So we're going to use delta Y, VIT plus one half AT squared. This is for the water balloon. And for Jake, because he's moving in the X direction, let's go back and go with delta X. So that's VIT plus one half AT squared for Jake. Okay, what are the critical assumptions that we have to make? Well, for the water balloon, we know that it starts from rest, and therefore VI is equal to zero. That cancels out. For Jake, we know that he is jogging at a constant speed of 3 meters per second. So this entire thing, A is equal to zero. Therefore, this cancels out. Okay, so now we're going to solve for the time in both and see if they're equal. So let's start with the water balloon. So that's going to be delta Y. 1 half a t squared. Let's rearrange this. So this will be 2 delta y. Okay, let's put the a at the bottom. And because there's a square, there's a square root. Will be equal to the time. Now let's solve. So this is our, let's plug in rather. I'm getting too overexcited sometimes. So we know that it travels negative 5.25 meters. 
and we know that a is negative 9.8 so now we can plug in finally so that's going to be 2 times negative 5.25 divided by negative 9.8 don't forget the negatives again this will be 1.035 seconds so the time is around 1.035 seconds I'm not going to use sig figs yet because I want the exact values when I'm comparing something like this now let's go with uh, Jake Delta X VIT because it's a constant uniform speed now if we want to isolate time it's simply going to be T is equal to Delta X over VI this is just going to be 3 divided by I mean 4 divided by 3 so that's 4 meters at the top 3 meters at the bottom now let's get my calculator 4 divided by 3 is simply going to be equal to oops sorry 4 divided by 3 is uh, there 1.33 seconds okay now let's compare your water balloon gets there in 1.035 seconds Jake gets there in 1.33 seconds so because they're not equal we can assume that it was uh, not uh, hit and this is your final answer okay so in proving problems like this where you're going to deal with two cases of motion be sure that uh, you still know your horizontal motion because here we're going to go back to delta x and don't forget that when we're going back to horizontal motion we cannot assume that a is 9.8 we have to be careful in considering that so thank you for watching i hope you learned something new from this video and again i will see you within the next few weeks as we discuss free fall and vertical motion take care